We are often asked which ZS figures to use. Yes, it's true that the books have different ZS numbers for the same circuit breaker, but which ones do we use? And does it matter? If we look in the wiring regulations book, the big brown book, we will find ZS values for the different breakers and fuses. And another totally different value in the on-site guide and the electrician's guide to the building regulations. But wait, there's a third value, different again in the same wiring regs book. Let's just take any example, a 40 amp type B breaker for instance. In the brown regs book, we have two values for ZS for the same breaker. And then the on-site guide and the electrician's guide show a third value. Why is this and what's going on? The four books shown will all have ZS tables. This is where to find them in each publication. The on-site guide and the electrician's guide to the building regulations have the same tables, the same ZS values. So, if we talk about the on-site guide, we could just as easily be referring to the electrician's guide. Let's start at the beginning, with Appendix 3 of the wiring regulations. Page numbers will refer to the brown book. Appendix 3 lists the standard requirements for ZS, the starting point or raw data as I call it. On page 417 of the wiring regs, you will find this chart called figure 3A4, which is for the type B circuit breakers to BSEN 60898 and RCBOs to BSEN 61009. Each breaker type and fuse type in current use will have a page in Appendix 3. We are interested in the chart at the top right. Let's follow the ZS story for a 32 amp type B circuit breaker as shown here. This tells us that a 32 amp breaker with 160 amps of fault current flowing through it will trip in about 0 0.1 seconds. This clearly covers our requirement for the circuit to disconnect in 0 0.4 seconds or less for final circuits. If it trips in 0 0.1 seconds, then it will also meet the 5 second or less disconnection time for distribution circuits. This is the requirement that manufacturers will make circuit breakers to, how they design them. This is the starting point for calculating ZS. If a current of 160 amps flows through a 32 amp BSEN 60898 type B circuit breaker, then the device will disconnect in less than 0 0.4 seconds. Using Ohm's law, we can calculate what value of circuit resistance will allow 160 amps to flow. We always use 230 volts, the nominal voltage, for our calculations. 230 volts divided by 160 amps gives us 1.44 ohms. We now know that if a resistance, or ZS, is less than 1.44 ohms, then at least 160 amps of fault current will flow and the 32 amp type B breaker will operate in the required time. Now that we know this, which is what the manufacturer's standards expect, let us look at part 4 of the wiring regulations where we will find tables of ZS values already calculated for us. We will find type B breakers on page 68 in table 41.3. This is the same table for circuit breakers and RCBOs. Found the correct section for type B devices as highlighted in red here. Now find 32 amps and immediately below it is the maximum ZS value which in our example is 1.37 ohms. These are called tabulated values. They've come from tables of ZS values in the regs book. Tabulated, it's important that you remember this. So already we found a difference between the tabulated data and the standard or raw data that we started with. Why the difference? Look just below table 41.3 on page 68 at note number one, highlighted here in red. It tells us 
that a C-min factor of 0.95 has been applied to determine the loop impedance values or ZS. What does this mean? C-min is a factor to take into account voltage fluctuations from the supply. And it tells us that C-min is 0.95, that the voltage minimum might only be 95% of the nominal. We are interested in fluctuations below 230 volts because if the voltage reduces then the fault current will also reduce and we may not get our required 160 amps. If we multiply the standard values from page 417 by C min we will get the tabulated values as shown on this page. The next question is if the voltage is dropped then by how much has the current dropped? Taking our 230 volts nominal voltage and multiplying by 0 0.95 we get 218.5 volts as the low figure. If the volts are less the current will be less. 218.5 volts divided by 1.44 ohms is just 151.7 amps. Not close enough to the 160 amps that we need. We are not going to meet the requirements for disconnection times. We need to do more. What we do is multiply the standard resistance, the raw data, by the same C min factor of 0 0.95. This will reduce the resistance. It will make the maximum ZS smaller. If the resistance goes down, the current will go up. 1.44 ohms multiplied by 0 0.95 gives us a tabulated ZS of 1.368 ohms, shown as 1.37 in the book. How does this affect the current? 218.5 volts divided by 1.368 ohms is 159.72 amps, which is 160 amps when rounded up. Now we are back to 160 amps of fault current and the device will trip in time. So, back to table 41.3 and after adjusting for C min, our maximum ZS should now be 1.37 ohms. Remember that we call it tabulated because it comes from the tables in the wiring regulations. Now we can look at the on-site guide and the ZS values are the same numbers as in the electrician's guide to the building regulations. Look at appendix B of the on-site guide. And on page 145, we have table B6 as shown here. We are staying with our 32 amp type B circuit breaker, so find type B on the left, shown in the red box, and travel along the row until you come to the column for 32 amps, where the two cross is the ZS that we need, shown here as 1.1 ohms. ZS maximum is just 1.1 ohms. Different again to the 1.44 that we started with and the 1.37 tabulated value. Why do we have another ZS value and why is it so very different? This is because of an adjustment that we make and we call this adjustment the 80% rule. The 80% rule reduces the ZS value even further. This is to compensate for temperature increases in the cable, such as environmental changes grouping of cables or changes caused by current flow in the conductors. As the conductor temperature increases, so does the resistance. If the resistance increases, then the current goes the opposite way and decreases. We might lose our 160 amps again. We have a limiting temperature for cables and for copper conductors that limit is 70 degrees Celsius. We assume that the copper conductor will not exceed 70 degrees Celsius and so we design circuits so that 70 degrees centigrade is not exceeded. For the 32 amp type B breaker in this example, ZS must not exceed 1.37 ohms even at 70 degrees C. Let's say that we measure our circuit and the ZS that we measure is already at the maximum of 1.37 ohms and we are at room temperature of about 20 degrees, normal temperature conditions. We know that as soon as the temperature of the cable increases, either because of ambient temperature changes, 
excessive currents, grouping of cables and so on, the resistance, the ZS, is going to go up. If resistance goes up, our 160 amps is going to go down. We are not going to meet the required disconnection times. So, if the resistance rises with temperature, what resistance should ZS be at 20 degrees centigrade or room temperature to not exceed 1.37 ohms at the conductor temperature of 70 degrees Celsius? What is the new starting point? How much lower must the resistance be? On this drawing, what should the starting point be at the green arrow at 20 degrees so that we do not exceed 1.37 ohms at the red arrow when the conductor is at 70 degrees. This is where the 80% rule comes in. Take the tabulated value and multiply by 0 0.8 to get yet another value. 1.37 multiplied by 0 0.8 equals 1.1 ohms. This 1.1 ohms is called a measured value. It's the ZS that we will measure with our test meters when on site. We've taken the tabulated value from a table in the wiring regs, multiplied by 0 0.8, and arrived at our measured value. What this means is that for the 32 amp Type B breaker, if our test meter shows 1.1 ohms or less for ZS, then 1.37 ohms is not going to be exceeded at 70 degrees Celsius. Do try and remember this. They will try and catch you out with it in exams. The wiring regulations, the big brown book, gives us tabulated values of ZS. The on-site guide gives us measured values, those that we measure with our test meters. And get them the wrong way around, and your schedule of test results will not look right either. These two tables here should serve as a reminder. Where in the books should you look to find the data? Most times, we will not use the raw data, but you needed to know the starting point for working out ZS. Tabulated ZS is found in the wiring regulations book in part 4, and the 18th edition exam will expect you to use tabulated values unless the question asks otherwise. Measured ZS is found in the on-site guide, and this is the ZS that you will measure and check against with your test meter when on site. The maths part reminds you of how to get the numbers, when to use C min, when to use the 80% rule. Measured ZS is sometimes written as ZSM with a small m in brackets, just to show that this is the measured ZS value. Sometimes, but not always, watch out for that one. Having a low measured ZS gives us the confidence that the fuse or breaker will trip in accordance with requirements. The lower the actual ZS, the better. Lower resistances help guarantee that a high fault current will flow. Here, we've just chosen three different Type B breakers to show the different amounts of fault current required to make them trip as required. Notice that the smaller the breaker rating, the bigger the ZS that is allowed. Smaller breaker sizes have a bigger allowable ZS for the circuit. And finally, this table shows the progression from the standard values through the tabulated values and on to the measured ZS values for a selection of Type B breakers. Similar to the previous table, it shows that as the breaker rating increases, the required fault current increases and the maximum ZS values decrease. A similar pattern with totally different results would be obtained from Type C and Type D breakers and it might be worth your time to make the same calculations as here, but starting with the C and D data that is shown in Appendix 3 on pages 418 and 419. I'll leave that one with you. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful and informative. Understanding ZS, where it comes from, and while we have several different values, is a good skill to have, and makes the understanding of what you're doing so beneficial to you in your career. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website 
at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.